Which of these books should you read in 2023 to learn Go? I'm Jonathan Hall, and I'll be answering that question for you. So it's 2023, and you want to learn Go. What's the best book to get you on your way? This question is not as easy to answer as you might expect. The Go language, which came out over a decade ago, has changed a lot since then. Uh, most recently in 2022 when generics were added. So many of the excellent books that I would have recommended in the past just aren't up to date anymore and sometimes almost completely irrelevant. So I set out on a mission to read every book I could find on Go that was written in the last year to year and a half to try to answer the question, what's the best book you should read in 2023 to learn Go? And this video is gonna answer that question for you. Of course, if you're learning Go, you don't wanna stop with a book. You need to be writing code, you need to be reading code that others have written, asking questions of people in the community, others who write Go code, and maybe you're interested in taking a course. I'm working on a course series right now. Uh, you can head over to boldlygo.tech slash courses to check those out and see if any of them might be able to help you learn Go. I also want to mention I have a free daily email list at boldlygo.tech slash daily, which will provide you daily tips on learning Go. So check out those two resources but let's jump into the book reviews for now. There are timestamps in the description below, so you can jump straight to the reviews if you want to or to a particular review, but before I dive into those, I am going to uh, tell you a little bit about the process and some of what went into building this uh, list of reviews and, and my final recommendations, so you have a little bit more context about how I came to these conclusions. So why bother writing another list, uh, or, or for that matter, reading a bunch of books about Go? Why not just rely on the Amazon reviews? Uh, those are usually pretty reliable, right? Well, they probably are reliable. However, they're often outdated. As I mentioned at the beginning, Go has changed a lot. Uh, in the last 10 years, we've added uh, context, we've added error wrapping, uh, we added modules, that was a really big change, uh, and we added context very recently. And if you have a book that was written before any of these features came out, uh, those features just won't be covered. So I wanted to review recently written books and look for some of these key changes and make sure that they're covered in there so that if you are learning Go in 2023, you can learn the current version of Go and uh, be a leg up on if you had maybe bought a book that was five or 10 years outdated. Additionally, I wanted to look for books that aren't just on Amazon. Uh, there are a number and a growing number of self-published books. Some are on Amazon, some are not. So at least two of the books on my list are not listed on amazon.com. So I did find a few that weren't there and hopefully that will help make this a richer uh, review experience. And finally, the last reason I wanted to do this is most of the reviews you read on Amazon or other places are written by the people who've read the book, and that's going to generally mean the reviews written by beginners. And a lot of beginners aren't going to necessarily have the context to know, at least not right away, whether or not that book really helped them learn the language. So I've been programming a Go for eight years now. I thought it would be valuable to offer some of uh, of my insight as an experienced Go developer to whether or not I think some of these books are complete or accurate, uh, whether they would have helped get you off on the right foot if you're trying to learn Go. Now, I've had a few people suggest I should just write my own book about Go. And that might be fun, I guess. I appreciate the vote of confidence, but there are a few reasons that I'm not doing that, at least not right now. The first is, as it turns out, there are already a number of excellent books about learning Go. Second, on a personal note, my bigger interest is in helping current software developers improve their productivity, their effectiveness in writing software and delivering software. That's not to say that's incompatible with teaching beginners Go, but it is a subtly different focus. Uh, so at least for now, I'm focusing on that other group. And third, I'm already producing a lot of Go-related content, and switching to writing a book would mean putting a lot of that on the back burner or stopping it altogether. I already write my daily email list. I have this YouTube channel. I have the Cup of Go weekly Go news podcast. There's a link to that in the description. And I'm working on developing courses to help uh, current software developers improve their Go skills. Best is always subjective. What's best for one person will not be best for another. So how do I choose the best book to learn Go? Well, before I even bought any of these books, I had a, a list of criteria in mind, and I want to talk about what those are so you understand the filter that I'm using when reviewing these books. The first, and probably the most obvious, is that I wanted a book that was relatively up to date. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, generics were added to Go at the beginning of 2022 with Go 1.18. So I wanted a book that you know came out around that time or later. Uh, it turns out there's very few books that came out that recently. Uh, so I extended my search a little bit to a few months before that on the hope that maybe one of the books would talk about generics even though it hadn't been released yet. 
and actually one of those books did talk about generics even before uh, they came out, and that was Learning Go by John Bodner, which made the cut. Uh, I'll be reviewing that one in a moment. Second on my list of criteria would be that the book should be designed for those who have no experience with Go. Now, I had in my mind that this would mean that they have some experience with another language, perhaps JavaScript or C++ or something, but I actually found a couple of books that didn't even make this assumption. They jump straight into Go for those who have no experience programming at all. Third, and this is probably nebulous, I wanted a good book. <laughs> What's a good book? Well, I wanted it to be entertaining, easy to read, understandable, free of factual errors, and so on and so forth. Now, there are many ways to write, and especially when it comes to technical books like this, there are different styles, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, and I have my preference, and you may have a different preference. So when my preference colors my recommendation, I try to make that clear and let you make an informed decision if your preference is different than mine. One thing I did not focus on in my selection criteria is price. Virtually every book that I reviewed cost $50 US or less, and I feel like that should be a reasonable amount of money to invest into one's career. Now, having said that, I do recognize that many people simply can't afford even that much money. And if that describes you, I hope that you have access to a public library where you can uh, borrow one of these books. And if that still doesn't describe you, then there are good resources online for Learning Go for free, and uh, I would encourage you to, to look at some of those. And one last comment on my selection criteria, something I did not uh, consider, is sponsorships. None of these books were given to me. I did not know any of the authors prior to reviewing their books. I didn't ask for permission. I didn't ask for a review copy. I paid for every one of these books out of my pocket, and I'm not making any money on these recommendations. These authors are not paying me. The only way I make money off of this is if you click on one of the links to one of the books, some of the links are Amazon uh, affiliate program links. So I might get a few cents off of an order if you follow those links uh, to amazon.com. So I started this search at the end of 2022, preparing for the beginning of 2023. And I looked on amazon.com uh, for books that came out in the last year to year and a half. Uh, and I found six. So I started through my initial stack of six books, started writing reviews and publishing the videos, and then I got some great feedback from my viewers and readers. And they pointed me to a few other books, and so my list has expanded to a total of 11, 10 really, plus a bonus uh, that's mentioned at the end. Included in that list of 10 books are two older books, two that kept coming up as recommended, even though they're much older than the criteria I'm looking for. One of those older books, it's a classic, is The Go Programming Language by Alan Donovan and Brian Kerningham. And the other was Get Programming with Go, published by Manning Publications, by Nathan Youngman and Roger Pepe. So even though these are both older books and don't talk about generics and in some cases even other vital concepts in Go, I wanted to include them in the reviews because I didn't want to be accused of skipping a great book. Uh, so I took these into consideration. Uh, and the, the full reviews, of course, I'll have links up here. They didn't make the final cut, mainly because of the missing information. But uh, watch the reviews if you're interested. Aside from the great feedback from uh, my viewers, I've learned some great things while doing these book reviews. Uh, I learned some things about Go I, I didn't know. Um, who knew that some of the 64-bit architectures still use a 32-bit integer size? I didn't know that. Well, I guess John Bodner knew that. Thanks, John. But it's been a real joy learning more about Go, uh, diving into some of these books, and uh, just being exposed to the feedback from the community. So aside from the great feedback from my viewers and readers, the one of the best surprises I got was some great feedback from some of the authors of some of the books I reviewed. Big thanks to John Bodner, Corey Lanou, and Donia Shailud. I hope I said that right. Uh, it's been great hearing from you, and I'd love to hear from all the rest of you too, uh, the, the authors, if, uh, if you're interested. And I especially want to say thanks to the authors of the books I didn't select. Uh, I know that uh, my criteria can be strict sometimes, uh, and e even the worst book on the list, in my view, uh, took a lot of effort and a lot of time, and I appreciate you t taking the time and putting that effort in to help the Go community. If you have ever studied a foreign language, there's a good chance that you have been bombarded with hours of grammar rules. You're learning about adjectives and pronouns and, and adjectives and conjugations. You might even be good at memorizing these rules and answering the quizzes about whether or not an adjective comes before or after the, the noun in a sentence. But if your experience has been like mine, memorizing these rules doesn't really help you uh, when it comes time to have a conversation. Tango El Gato Los Panalones. El Niño! Of course, in contrast to this sort of grammar first approach, many uh, language courses take a more immersive approach where they have you speaking your target language uh, for, for everything, even though you don't necessarily know what it means yet. You just stay away or I'll cut it! Dig me! I'll boy, I'll cortarla! Drop it, kid, or I'll blow your brains out! I'll be the day of a perder!
Each approach, of course, has its own advantages as well as disadvantages. The grammar first approach often helps adults get a, a grasp of the language quicker because they have more context that they can attach uh, concepts to, whereas the more immersive approach tends to work better for uh, for children. And uh, of course, there's reasons that you might want to do either or, or the other. How does this apply to learning a programming language? Well, I would say that broadly speaking, we have analogs to these two approaches uh, when learning a programming language. And what I call the concept-based approach, you learn a language by learning the concepts, uh, sort of built up like a house of cards. Uh, you, you learn the basics before you learn the more advanced topics and so on and so forth. On the other hand, you have also the sort of more immersive or, or what I'll call a project-based approach where you start with code. Uh, you don't necessarily know what the code means or what it does yet, but you start with the code and then you learn to tweak it. This is how I learned to program back on a Commodore 64 uh, when I was learning BASIC. And there, of course, are pros and cons to both of these approaches. I think it's important to understand these two approaches, though, because they help uh, paint the picture of the reviews I'm about to, to give you. And for some people, in particular, absolute beginners, the more immersive approach might make more sense. Other people will prefer the more concept-based approach. And I'll also say that there's a third category, uh, which none of these books truly fit into directly, but it's relevant, and that is reference material. Uh, what do you know about uh, vulcanized rubber? Spock's birth control. <laughs> <laughs> you need these books. Reference material is generally not presented in, a, in an orderly fashion. It's just maybe topical with a, an index. The index is a big piece there. So here we are, finally, at the recommendations. Let's jump in. Which is the best book overall? Learning Go. An Idiomatic Approach to Real-World Go Programming by John Bodner stands out to me as my number one recommendation if you are trying to learn Go in 2023. This book, Learning Go, goes wide with all the topics covered and deep enough for anybody who's just getting started. It generally takes a concept-based approach while mostly building on first principles throughout the book. However, uh, it doesn't adhere strictly to this first principles order, and there are times when it opts to talk about a more advanced topic that isn't covered yet, and it will do what I like. I actually like this approach a lot. Uh, it gives you a brief introduction to the topic and then points you to the following chapter or section that goes into greater detail. So I, I think this is a good compromise between the two approaches, uh, especially for those who already have experience with programming and may not need all the nitty gritty details along the way. This book does an impressive job of thoroughly covering the essential elements of Go. A key feature I really like about this book is the way it calls out a number of common gotchas that will affect many newcomers to the language. As one simple example, on page 32, it says, Another Go requirement is that every declared local variable must be read. It is a compile time error to declare a local variable and not read its value. This is something I see tripping up newcomers all the time. It's asked about on Stack Overflow frequently. So it's nice to see that these sorts of little uh, little tricks and, and gotchas are, are covered in the book. So Hopefully you won't be uh, surrounded by surprises after reading this book. This book is generally free from technical errors, and many of the outdated bits have been updated. If you have a more recent printing, uh, it's one edition, but they've had, I think, three printings up till now. If you purchase a more recent printing, uh, it has little sidebars indicating where something is, is outdated and will be updated in a future revision. What's more important, uh, chapter 15, the chapter on generics, uh, was uh, somewhat incorrect or, or outdated in the first printing, uh, according to the author who, who responded to me on my first review. And he said that chapter has been made available for free online, the most updated version. So even if you bought the first printing of the first edition of this book that has the outdated generics information, you still have free access to the updated version. And word from the author is that a second edition of this book is in the works, uh, presumably to come out around 2024, perhaps, so maybe in a year from now. Um, he said uh, it depends on what new features are maybe added to go 1.22. So uh, 1.22 should be released in the beginning of 2024. So that's how I uh, guessed that timeline. So this is my number one recommendation. If you're interested in the full review, of course, there's a link right up here. Uh, click on that. You can watch my full review of this book, Learning Go by John Bodner. Now, if you're here learning Go as your first programming language, you've never done JavaScript or Ruby or C Sharp or anything else, then my recommendation for you is the book For the Love of Go by John Arundel. Author John Arundel is an experienced Go teacher. Uh, he has a large number of books and, and videos and even online resources uh, about Go. I'll have links to those uh, in his website in the description, of course. This book, For the Love of Go, really starts at the beginning with having you install Go and then initializing a Go project using the Go modern hit command. And that's something that many of the other books have, have overlooked, largely because they're outdated. So I, I really appreciate this book. Uh, 
is modern. It talks about Go modules. And in fact, it's been updated already in 2023. So we're, we're only in February and it's already been updated for this year. So that's really great. One thing I really love about this book is that it takes testing seriously. Even though it's a book for beginner programmers, it introduces you to the concept of testing and explains why it's important from the very first project. The only other book I've reviewed that did this was Learn Go with Pocket Size Projects, which hasn't even been released yet. Uh, but I'll have a link, of course, to that in the full review in the description. In general, this book goes to great lengths to really get you off on the right foot with your Go programming. It is not a complete book. After you finish this, you'll definitely want to go on to another book, uh, perhaps from John Arundel or, or another author. Uh, but this is a really, really great, solid starting point if you are not familiar with programming in, at all. I'll have a link, of course, to the full review of this book if you want more details on why I think this is a great book. Uh, but I strongly recommend For the Love of Go by John Arundel if you have not done any programming before. The book Go Fundamentals by Mark Bates and Corey Lanou is an excellent book that didn't quite make my number one recommendation uh, for a couple of reasons, which I'll talk about. But I still love this book. I think this would be a great second book for many people to read if you're learning Go. Or it could be a great first book if you've become familiar with Go through work or other projects, but you've never read a book about it and you want to sort of solidify your knowledge around the language. The biggest reason this book is not my number one recommendation has to do with the way it's organized. In the words of the authors, they went through great effort to make sure that the examples and chapters don't contain any new information that they haven't covered up to that point. I applaud that effort, uh, but it makes for some awkward ordering of topics. And I talk about this in my full review. Of course, you can watch that as well. But what this means in practice is that you'll really need to be reading several hundred pages of the book before you get to a point where you have enough basic Go knowledge to write meaningful, useful programs. And I think a lot of people, especially beginners, aren't going to have that level of patience. Although both Mark Bates and Corey Lanou are professional Go teachers, uh, they founded Go for Academy, and their experience could well be different than mine. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting it is uh, because they've written this book and they have built it based on their experience. This book, Go Fundamentals, is probably the most extreme example I have found in this review series of the concept-based approach sort of taken to the extreme. Uh, if you appreciate that, if you like that approach, then this could very well be the best book for you. A secondary information I chose, Learning Go, over this one as my number one recommendation, although this really is secondary, it's a distant second, is uh, the breadth of information covered. Uh, this book, Go Fundamentals, is much larger uh, than Learning Go. Uh, and therefore, it goes much deeper into the topics it covers. However, it doesn't necessarily cover as many topics. And I think as a beginner, most developers don't need a really in-depth discussion of most topics. They need a, a deep enough discussion, uh, but on more topics to, to get a feel for the whole language. So that's my secondary reason that this isn't my number one recommendation. Um, but I, I still think this would be an excellent second book uh, if you're lear learning Go and you really want to go in depth with more information now. Right after I started uh, publishing the reviews uh, early in this series, I became aware of a book that's not even printed yet. The book is called Learn Go with Pocket Size Projects, and it's available from the Manning Early Access Program, or MEEP. So I pre-ordered a copy. I got the e-copy available immediately, and I read it in PDF, and that's what I reviewed. Uh, at the time of my review, only the first four of 12 chapters, so about a third of the book, has been written. But I was impressed. True to the title, this is definitely a project-based book. Uh, it starts with a uh, simple hello world, uh, but I was impressed because even with that simple hello world example, it has you write tests. And not just because you should, but because it extends that hello world example to be multilingual. And it uses the testing uh, capabilities of Go to ensure that you do it correctly and in a way that meets your expectations. Of course, I cannot offer a full review of this book yet because it's not complete. Uh, when it is complete, I hope to do a full review of it. Uh, so maybe later this year. In the meantime, of course, watch my full partial review uh, uh, up there. And Manning has generously reached out and offered a discount to my readers and viewers if you use the code BOLDLY45. So if you want to check out uh, the book, uh, of course, a link to purchase is in the description and use code BOLDLY45 through May 3rd and you'll get 45% off your order of this book. I make no money off of that. That's just Manning being generous. So there you have it. There are my two number one recommendations depending on your experience level. Uh, a secondary book that I recommend is a second book and then a, an honorable mention uh, from Manning. Where do you go from here? I have gotten great feedback on my book reviews in general, and I have received 
a number of requests to review other books that aren't targeting beginners to Go. So maybe I'll keep this up. Maybe I'll keep reviewing Go books. Uh, it's fun for me. I enjoy uh, creating this content and I enjoy your feedback. If you'd like me to review a different Go book, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what book you think should be reviewed and I'll try to get to that in an upcoming video. I will also be keeping my eyes out, of course, for new books as they come out that target beginners to go. And I intend to update this uh, video, create a new one uh, next year, uh, Best Books for 2024. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, head over to boldlygo.tech slash daily and subscribe to my daily mailing list where you also get announcements on these sorts of things. And I'll try to keep you up to date on the best books you should be reading and a lot of other Go related content to help you learn to do Go better. Thank you for watching. If you made it through the whole video, that's quite impressive. I appreciate your time and attention. Uh, be sure to check out the comments where I will have links to each of the individual reviews I did and links to buy the books if you're interested. Again, I don't make money off of those except those that go through Amazon where I make just a few cents off of uh, a referral fee. Thank you for watching. Until the next video, boldly go.